Hey everybody, I'm here with a look at my uh, decks, my tarot and oracle cards that I'm going to be using for the month of April. So if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, I'm going to use these for the weekly daily draws. If you're part of the Patreon and you get tarot scopes, you're going to see these cards um, in the weekly tarot scopes. Or if you get a reading from me on the Etsy shop, you will see them being used. Unless I intuit that um, I need to use another deck for you, then this is the decks you're probably going to see. So let me know what you're working with for the month of April. I would love to see that or what your spring decks are. I love to see those kind of videos too, but I'm going to show you what I'm working with. So first of all, I always have a tarot deck that I work with for the month. And this month it is the Tarot in Wonderland Oracle. So this came out, I think it was last year. I think it's like a 2019 deck. It is illustrated by Eugene Smith and a uh, book is by Barbara Moore who does a lot of the Llewellyn books. This is in one of the um, the newer Llewellyn type boxes which I have to say I really love. Um, I love a good magnetic closure and a nice sturdy box to keep your deck in. So it's um, you know the outside looks pretty nice. You've got the a uh, nice sort of checkerboard inside there. You've got a nice glossy book with um, glossy colored pages. It's actually a pretty thick book. Like, look at that. That's pretty thick. And each page has like a full color picture. And then you've got the write-up over here by Barbara Moore. It is just a really beautiful, beautiful book. I have to say Luan stepped up their game with these as well. Um, and then you've got like um, some ideas for different um, spreads at the back, which they usually have. And there's a forward. Oh, they have here some of the old illustrations, which I love. Um, this was one of my favorite books as a kid. How to read the cards. So a pretty good, a pretty good um, book, you know, for, for, uh, you know, your standard type Llewellyn deck. So, um, and of course, Barbara Moore writing it. She's amazing and awesome. So love this book. Um, I was going to say that I picked um, the Alice in Wonderland type theme. I was going to do this anyway in the spring, but with all of us being cooped up in our houses, or most of us, uh, depending where you are in the world, what your job is, um, you know, it just feels like we're kind of through the looking glass. We're kind of in this weird sort of twilight zone where some things are normal and some things just aren't. Um, so I thought that the Alice Tarot would be really appropriate for all of this that's going on. Um, I have to say too, I hope that wherever you are, you are safe um, and that you are well um, and that you're, you know, writing this out as best you can. I know it is difficult for many of us, that's for sure. Especially those of us who are sensitive, you know, like we really feel it. So um, yes, I'm sending you all so much love. But anyway, back to back to the tarot. I am now rambling on. All right, so book I was impressed with as well. Oh, I have to show you the inside too of this with the ribbon and a Cheshire cat. Like how awesome is that? Awesome. Okay, so the cards themselves, I know some people have complained about the Llewellyn stock. Um, I actually don't mind it because I think it's like fairly easy to shuffle. I'm also not like super precious about my cards too. Um, so that's the backs there. They're not reversible. You've got Alice on one side, the rabbit on the other, but that's not the end of the world. You'll see some of the cards like this one has a white line. I feel like this, the ones I got, um, the way that they cut them, you can kind of see, I'm going to try to see if I can find one. Here we go. You can see the next card right at the edge. I don't know if you can see that. Um, I don't mind. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect for me, but I know this might bother some people. And I don't know if it was just this run that this happened with. Like you said, you can see it on the back of this one here. Um, but um, it might, that might annoy some people. So it's got kind of your traditional Alice in Wonderland type imagery. It's very colorful. I like all the colors, I have to say. And they do draw from both um, Alice in Wonderland and Alice through the looking glass. I like this one. King of Cups in the water. Got the White Queen here. A lot of Mad Hatter type imagery. There's the tower. 
it's a really colorful, cool deck. And if you're an Alice in Wonderland fan, I think you'll really, really like it. Um, if it's not your thing, it may not be so much. But I do, I do like this deck. I find it to be quite fun. It's actually a really straightforward reader as well. To go with all of that, um, my Oracle deck for the month is, just getting things organized here, the Alice in Wonderland Oracle by uh, Lucy Cavendish and Jasmine Beckett Smith. And this came out uh, 2018, so a couple of years ago, and I haven't had a chance to really work with it much, and I thought this might be a really great month to work with it. Um, you've got this beautiful kind of blue on the inside there. The cards are your typical sort of blue angel. They're a bit bigger. I love the backs, I have to say. I love this. I'm finding this deck um, to be very spot on and does not pull any punches, um, especially with what's going on right now, like issues like mortality and manage to be glad. Like it's, it's not pulling any punches. Um, you know, you think, um, almost have prizes. Um, you'd think, you know, Alice in Wonderland, it would be cutesy and fun, but no, it's, it's, this is kind of, kind of dark and, um, kind of calls things as it sees it. So I'm uh, nonsense. And again, I thought this would be really good for kind of being in a strange, weird month. Oh, this one's based on, uh, Las Niñas, the, uh, I think that's the name of the painting by um, Velasquez. It's always tea time. This, this card has come up in so many readings for people um, and so apt. It says it's always tea time. So eternity, endless moments, repetition, same thing going on and on. Kind of that Groundhog Day feeling. This has come up for so many people lately. So I do quite like this deck. It is weird. It is, uh, it's got like this, it's got a very Hieronymus Bosch type feel. It's weird, it's quirky, it's a bit disturbing, but it does not pull any punches. So I'm very glad I picked that deck. And of course it comes with the usual type of like, book, the Lucy Cavendish, you know, kind of uh, information book. I don't really use that so much. Um, I really just go by uh, keywords and intuition when it comes to Oracle cards. Okay, I'm not gonna mess with that too much. All right, and then for my Lenormand deck, I'm still using the classic Lenormand. Um, this one just, I think, with its sort of Victorian type or 19th century imagery, uh, goes very well with the Alice deck, um, harkens back to another time. And the blues and things, I think it goes quite well with that deck. So I'm continuing to use that one. And then I always like to have like a god and goddess type deck that I'm using. Um, and I have here the Goddess Power Oracle, uh, which came out last year by Colette Baron Reed. I know some people have some issues with this deck. Um, I don't. Um, I take them as sort of more archetypes anyway. Uh, but I know some people have issues that it's not, it's not for everybody. Um, it's got like a, the thicker sort of cardstock and the matte finish. Um, I have to say, I'm not a huge fan of the matte finish. I know lots of people are and they love it. I find these harder to shuffle, I have to say. Um, the imagery is beautiful. Lilith has come up for a lot of people so far this month. Uh, Independence, got me at is truth. It is a diverse deck, I have to say. It is a very um, culturally and uh, diverse deck, which I do appreciate. We also have older goddesses. Um, they're not all young beauties, which I do appreciate as well. I just find this deck is very, um, it makes me think of Beltane. It makes me think of spring. Um, this one especially, look at that. So pretty. So I do um, enjoy working with this deck in conjunction with the Alice deck. This is all like, the, this is all very sort of feminine type imagery, but it's not, it's not weak. That's for sure. It is very, uh, very strong. Um, Alice is very sassy. She was definitely a strong, a strong young lady for her day. So it is a very like feminine empowered type decks that I'm using this month. So let me know what your movie blah, 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 you're using for the month of April or what you're using for spring. Um, you know, did you 
have a dex plan to use for this time of year and then with everything going on you changed your mind and felt drawn to something else uh, let me know how you're doing as well how you're handling all of this i know we're all we're all handling this differently and like i said you know different parts of the world uh it's it's being handled differently so i hope wherever you are you are safe like i said and you're doing well you're healthy um, and I love you all and I want to thank you, my patrons as well so so much for all of their support especially Jamie Marie and Nathan a shout out to you guys um, it helps me to keep going when all of this is going on so I thank you so much for that as well if you're interested in um, a reading on my shop I have the chakra readings on sale just because we're doing like a we're doing chakras is our theme for the month in our patreon so you can check it out over there if you want otherwise you know I just hope you're doing well and you're hanging in there so as always peace and love and rock and roll